HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Hello, and welcome to another edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we'll take you to the Hopkinton High School Science Fair. The Democratic Committee held a public meet and greet with the Islamic Masumin Center in Hopkinton, and Courtney will get you caught up to date with the many programs coming up on the HCAM channels with our HCAM Insider. But first, the Hopkinton Center for the Arts brand new art gallery was open for an exhibit entitled Describing the Real. The Hopkinton Center for the Arts hosted an art gallery called Describing the Real. The gallery featured artwork which explores the differences in representational images. My name is Marsha, Marsha Gleason, and I recently retired from being an art teacher for about 30 years, 24 years in South Pro. Um, I teach here at Hopkinton Center for the Arts and I recently started doing my own work when I retired and I've been studying with a couple of teachers that are my favorite teachers and um, this is an earlier work. Um, these are sort of middle and the two on panels are my most recent. Um, I love doing figurative paintings. Um, oftentimes they're family and friends. Um, this is a self-portrait. Uh, that's my grandfather. Um, and I mostly do direct painting, which means that I start and finish the painting within one sitting or one time of working. Um, and with that comes a style that shows a little bit of, you know, the artist's brushstroke, and um, it's it's a little um, it's a little fresh in terms of just putting down the paint and letting it stay as a final statement. So that's what I enjoy doing. Um, as I said, figures are my specialty that I love to do so much, and um, I'm having a lot of fun and learning a lot, and then. I enjoy teaching that to others, um, and that's what we're doing in my class here at Hop Arts. We're doing a little painting and a little drawing and having a lot of fun, so it's great. <laughs> All right, excellent. Do you Thank have a favorite you. piece on display today? Uh, yeah. That's hard because, as I said, there's sort of a range of my growth and how I started in, and in the process of, um, of learning and growing and um, finding different ways to express myself um, and the people that I draw. Um, I guess because that's my grandfather, that might be one of my favorites. So. <laughs> but I'm enjoying all the other art here and it's a great variety of styles and subject matter. Um, so it's just, and it's a wonderful space here and it's so exciting to be part of this. This is just a fabulous um, center for the arts. I, uh, well, I work in acrylic and um, predominantly flowers at this point. Um, most of them are, I work from also from, uh, from photographs, so I, I work slowly. Otherwise, my, my pieces would probably not um, uh, look quite so fresh. Um, so, I, I don't know, I, I'm not usually very comfortable talking about my work, except for the fact that, sort of the process, I don't have a, sort of a grand theory of what they're supposed to mean, except for just to be beautiful and enjoy, because I, I love flowers and I love nature and, and what I see in the world around me. Can you explain the process a little bit and how it takes you? Depends on the piece. Um, some of the pieces take um, anywhere from I don't know, a half, perhaps maybe eight hours. Um, some of the larger pieces can take as long as a month. Um, they're 
I work in small areas and sort of build from the back to the front so that the, um, the colors are very vibrant in the front. And I like working on a white canvas so that the colors really stand out and um, try to be as, as uh, vivid as possible. I love color and um, I, I gravitate towards it. It's hard for me to, to work in something that's not um, a, a bright color so I have to force myself into the darker, darker shades. Mm -hmm. uh, do you have a favorite piece here today? I have two favorite pieces. Um, the large painting with the, uh, it's called Red Party F Flowers 2, um, just mainly because of the work that went into it. That was one that took longer. Um, and then the other uh, is a, a painting called Open Hand, and um, it's a painting of a clementine fruit. And, um, Something about it just um, makes me happy when I see it. We painted it in January when it was very cold last winter, so it sort of warmed my soul as I was working on it. Hopkinton High School hosted a science and engineering fair. The event was sponsored and partially funded by the Hopkinton Parent Teacher Association, as well as the Framingham-based Bose Corporation. Some of the students talked to HCAM News about their projects. Hi, I'm Alexa Benek, and we are testing the effectiveness of different facial cleansers in removing bacteria from the face. So, a problem that teenagers struggle with is acne, and we realize that bacteria is a major cause of acne. And we thought that traditional facial cleansers will be more effective than just using regular water to remove bacteria from the face. And we tried to control our variables throughout, and Sarah's going to tell you more about that now. So we started off by, we always made sure that we had a sterile environment, and then we swabbed using the same method before and after. So we always swabbed in the A section, the swab from your forehead into the A plate, the B from the left cheek, and so on. So we would always compare the two. So we would do that before we washed your face, and then after as well. So then we would see the decreased percentage. And a graph, and we have a graph shown here, so the water actually increased in bacteria. The new Eugenia did a very good job, and it had a severe decrease in bacteria. Olay and Cetaphil both did a good job in decreasing the bacteria, but not nearly as well as um, the Neutrogena. So Eva's going to tell you more about that. So as Sarah said, Neutrogena was the most effective cleanser. It was able to reduce bacteria by 71%. Olay and Cetaphil reduced by 39% and 22%. And water actually increased the amount of bacteria by 19%. So we did some more research on to why Neutrogena was so su successful. And we realized that Neutrogena actually had some ingredients in it that the other cleansers lacked, including glycerin 7 and sodium cocoa sarcosinate, which happen to be cleansing agents that help remove bacteria from the face. So hopefully we're thinking about making our own cleanser and we're going to use those ingredients in our new ones. Thank you. Okay, so hi, my name is Hannah Sweeney. I'm a senior here at Hopkinton High School. Uh, this year I worked with ambient noise or sound pollution on ghost shrimp, which is a lab simulation for krill. Uh, with this, we are trying to test the, how the food population of krill would affect the whales. The whales, in turn, their feces help reduce carbon dioxide in our environment. If we have too much carbon dioxide in our environment, the emissions will heat up our environment, the global warming, um, melting our polar caps, and drowning out our cities across the world and this will cause uh, detrimental change to the human race and this is why we need to save the whales. Hi, my name is Callie and I'm a sophomore at the high school and my project is music's effect on visual spatial memory. And what I did is I tested different genres of music and saw how it affected someone's memory for memorizing like locations of things. My name is Bronwyn Pappaspires and I worked on supramolecular photosensitizers which are a chemical that um, energizes oxygen to kill um, harmful bacteria and envelop viruses such as Zika, HIV, influenza as along with various bacteria and it can be used in hospitals and in the agricultural field. There's plenty of applications for them. Um, my name is Parima Sharma and I'm a junior. And what we've done with these supermolecular photosensitizers is we tested them in the light and in the dark. And what we found is that they kill bacteria more significantly in the light than in the dark. So my project was on the um, quality of sleep and how it affects your cognitive well-being. 
and me and my partner, um, Priya, we decided to try to create an app that would track your sleep and see the relationship between electronic usage and sleep. Um, we tried to create the app using HTML and CSS coding, but that ended up not working. So we decided to continue this project next year, and eventually we'll start testing on people once we have the app created. Hi, I'm Vinay Gotham, and for my project, I was using Daphnia Magna to monitor water toxicity. So water, the, the experiment that I did is an example of a bioassay. A bioassay is an experiment where you take an organism and you put them into different concentrations and you see how they react. So the organism that I used was Daphnia magna. Daphnia magna is a freshwater crustacean found in parts of North America, South America, Eurasia, and even in some parts of Africa. So what I did is I took six samples all around the Metro West region and I put these Daphnia into all these environments and I wanted to see how they would react. Two of my samples resulted in the Daphnia dying way far more ahead than all the other samples and that gave me good evidence to say that these two samples have toxic soil in them that's harming the environment along with humans, aquatic animals, and all and in nature in general. Sixteen judges were at the Hopkinton High School Science and Engineering Fair and had the difficult task of choosing the top three projects. Judges included representatives from the U.S. Army Natick Soldier Center, Bose Corporation, Wellesley College, as well as a number of other organizations. Here are the top three winners accepting their prizes and talking about their projects. So, in third place, for Music Math, does music follow a Ziphian distribution? Brian Best. Hi, I'm Brian Best. I'm a junior, and um, my project involved studying note frequency in music to see if it fit into the natural math of our brains, which is Ziff's Law. And I found that music doesn't necessarily fit into Ziff's Law, but every song had a similar pattern. So it's not entirely random, and music could have its own place in the brain's math. And in second place, Smart Safety Warning and Notification System for Treadmills, Himanshu Minosha. What I did is I created a combination of hardware and software that uh, collect distance data uh, between the ultrasonic sensor and the user every uh, a thousand times every second. And then this data is transmitted uh, via Bluetooth uh, to a mobile app running on Apple's iOS, Google's Android, or Apple's uh, Watch OS. And then this data is segmented into three virtual zones, the green zone, the yellow zone, and the red zone. Uh, each zone invokes a different response uh, from uh, the device. So in the green zone, nothing happens because it's assumed that this is where the runner is most comfortable uh, and nothing is happening. First thing I would do is when I installed the hardware mm -hmm. is I would uh, pair automatically to the Bluetooth chip and then set up my green zone. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, uh, it's six inches away from this uh, brick right here. Mm -hmm. And then I would set up my yellow zone, which would be right here, which is 17 inches away. Mm -hmm. And then the final zone would be the red zone, which is let's see, 23 inches away. So now, I've gotten all three of my zones configured, and you would only need to do this once. So after this, these uh, preferences are saved. So now every time I start a run, I'm going to, as long as I'm in the green zone, I'm not gonna get any feedback. But the second I move out of my, out of this zone, my phone is starting to buzz and ring. But if the runner falls, I'm going to get this notification on my phone that asks if I'm okay to which I'm going to reply yes because I'm not hurt. But if I was hurt, a phone call would be, uh, a phone call would be made to uh, my house, which is my uh, first emergency contact, and then it would keep going through the list of emergency contacts I have listed on my phone. And our first place student worked very hard and had an excellent presentation. 
The Effects of Appreciation on Individual Happiness by Freya Proudman. <laughs> My project was the effect of appreciation on individual happiness. So a lot of research has shown that when you do good for others, it makes the other person feel good, but not a lot of research shows how that makes you feel happy in return. So the object of my study was to see how, by doing good for others, how that makes a person conducting these acts feel. So I had 20 volunteers, all a range of different demographics, no restrictions or anything. And then I came up with these tasks from studying Aristotle and these philosophers that I thought would have an effect on happiness, but we didn't know what type of effect that really did have. So on day one, the participants conducted task one. So for example, task one was smile at 15 random people. And then after they completed this task, they would say how this affected their average happiness. So on average, compared to their average happiness, so how much happiness they usually feel on a daily basis, did doing this task, did smiling at 15 random people, increase their happiness or decrease their happiness compared to their average? So looking at this one, we see that task one created all the participants had their happiness increase. Everybody had an increase in happiness. So then we can look at why did other things not really increase their happiness. So for example, when holding the door for other people, a, a participant noticed that when they were holding the door open for people, it didn't matter if 20 people said thank you. The one person who didn't say thank you less that lasting effect on them and didn't increase that person's happiness because they weren't appreciated back. So we see this whole reciprocated idea of happiness and how doing good for others helps you to be happy but also appreciating others and acknowledging that others are doing good helps make them and everybody happy in return. So in all I found that 92% of participants became more happy by doing good for others and doing appreciation and, doing, and conducting gratitude for others. You can find a ton of pictures of the science and engineering fair at seeninhopkinton.org. And you can also find much more video from the events on our website, hcam.tv. Congratulations to all the participants on a job well done. Coming up next on HCAM News, the Democratic Committee hosted a public meet and greet with the Islamic Masumin Center in Hopkinton. And Courtney will have our HCAM Insider. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers. Thank you. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Do you have what it takes? Will you make a difference? Always an adventure. Police and fire working together. Utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. The Hopkinton Democratic Committee invited the public down to Town Hall for a Meet Your Neighbor event and a big turnout was on hand to meet with representatives from the Islamic Masumin Center located in Hopkinton. One thing this is not about, it's not about local politics, it's not about state politics, it's not about national politics, it's not about international relations. It's not about those things. It's about people within the community getting to know each other. The Hopkinton Democratic Committee hosted an event called Get to Know Your Muslim Neighbor. The event was to allow residents to get to know neighbors from the Islamic Masumin Center in Hopkinton. Good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Mahmoud Jafri. I'm one of the founding members and the life trustee of the Islamic Masumin Center that was established here in Hopkinton almost 20 years ago. That used to be a house of worship. 
uh, when we bought it. It does have a colorful history, as some of you who have been here for a long time are aware of that. But we bought it as, as, as a house of worship, and it continues to be a house of worship. When we came to Hopkinton, 9-11 uh, hadn't happened. And we were welcomed with open arms. And even after 9-11, those arms are still open. And we are still a welcome community. And we have done some interfaith work in the past with the houses of worship, uh, representing all three monotheistic uh, traditions of uh, Jewish tradition, Christian tradition, and of course, the Muslim tradition. Thank you very much, um, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. That is peace and blessings upon you uh, by the way of Islam. Uh, it's an honor and pleasure uh, for me uh, to be uh, amongst you. Uh, and uh, I grew up in India, and you know, in, in, uh, when we were growing up as kids, our parents uh, were rest assured that you know. Uh, we were being taken care of even while they were not around us uh, and that's how we know neighbors and definitely the, the political rhetoric that we see today uh, you know creating this divide and this disparity uh, of debate is definitely causing a lot of concerns to people like me who are uh, there to uh, you know uh, uh, promote and propagate the faith that I believe in and also as a parent uh, of uh, two teenagers uh, and it was a great opportunity and I uh, appreciate the letter in the first place and then the invitation for us to be uh, called and present ourselves and you would know that at the end uh, that we have more commonalities than uh, differences and uh, and as uh, a community uh, which uh, as people who migrated and who came into this community we have the same aspirations as you have in fact we have looked up to those aspirations and have worked very very hard uh, to make it up to here um, uh, I grew up uh, going to a Protestant school 150 year old Protestant school back in the city uh, that I come from uh, and uh, we were aspiring to go to school in American universities. I did my master's here in California and then uh, that was my previous life when I was an engineer and then I got into uh, you know, seminary and that's how I, I'm, I'm here right now. Attendees of the event asked questions about the Muslim religion and Islamic beliefs. Uh, we have mystical traditions uh, which, is, uh, which uh, you know, uh, resonates with uh, pretty much uh, every society, uh, you know, trying to connect uh, yourself to your own self and to, to God. Because one of the very famous uh, saying of uh, the Prophet of Islam is Man arafa nafsak faqat arafa rabba Whoever knows himself knows God. So there's a journey that starts from your own self that leads you to God. And Rumi is one of those, uh, you know, people who actually uh, enable that journey. I would highly recommend uh, you guys uh, definitely looking into that tradition. Poetry is also a very, very strong uh, tradition. Um, as a matter of fact, um, a peak of eloquence is considered poetry in Islam. And uh, even Quran itself uh, was revealed to Prophet Muhammad in form of sort of like poetry and rhythm. and. and uh, um, a form of theater that uh, narrates um, historical events or religious events is, is very much a part and parcel of Islamic tradition. Calligraphy mm -hmm. is a form of art that uh, is very popular in, 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 in Islam and, and, and in that part of the world. Uh, and of course, I have to put in a plug for rugs because that's my business. <laughs> uh, oriental carpets, uh, they have a lot of symbolism that is inspired by Islamic faith and, and an Islamic tradition. And um, so, I mean, you know, it's humans <coughs> are humans and uh, religion uh, not necessarily puts a lid on, on their desire to express themselves. It is officially playoff time for Hiller's winter sports. Be on the lookout for Hiller's playoff hockey as well as playoff boys and girls basketball airing on the HCAM channels. To tell you more about what to expect, here's Courtney with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. 
On Monday, March 7th at 6.30 p.m., Kathleen Nealon discusses why seniors should have a legal plan in place on a new senior view. It might be that you're concerned that if you become unable to make your medical decisions, you want to make sure that there's a legal document in place so you control who's making those decisions for you. On Tuesday, March 8th at 6.45 p.m., the Board of Selectmen meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, March 9th at 1 p.m., Lisa Vasily discusses how to stop irritable bowel syndrome and reduce other related chronic conditions. On a new All About Hopkinton at 8 p.m., Mike Lawrence discusses his daily life and responsibilities as lead pastor of Faith Community Church. Right now, like we're doing a five-year plan about what we want to do as a church over the course of the next five years, and that's been a primary responsibility of mine. On Thursday, March 10th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Friday, March 11th at 6.30 p.m., Alma and Reno Bachi are back in the kitchen to make fried dough and fried zucchini on a new episode of The Golden Pan. So we egg and breadcrumb. And what kind of breadcrumbs are these? Seasoned. Seasoned breadcrumbs. So you want that flavor of all the spices in there. That's right. Before you, you do that. Okay, perfect. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's programs and when they will air, head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider newsletter. Or if you want to keep up to date with Hopkinton events, you can sign up for our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Right now on our website, you can view the Hopkinton presidential primary results. Don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thank you for watching.